Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. It has been notably mild at times recently, but I've read quite a lot of speculation on social media and elsewhere about the possibility of it turning a good deal colder as we head into February. So does that appear to be likely? Well, as usual, I'm going to start with a view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 30th. And at the outset, high pressure is centered over the south, so that has been one of the key factors in keeping things mild recently. And as I run this sequence, what we see is not a great deal of changes in the short term, but it does turn very windy and squally in the north for a time. I'll come back to that a little bit later. But high pressure is staying to the south of the UK and Atlantic influence more pronounced in the north, drier in the south. But then through the weekend and into the early part of next week, a change begins to shape up. Colder, much colder Arctic air starts to sweep southwards. Let's see what happens on this particular computer model run. It just really moves across the north and parts of the east of the UK. There's some snow there along the boundary zone, but at the very end here, it's turning milder once more with winds going into west or southwesterly direction, rain rather than snow. The possibility there, though, of a colder incursion across the north and the east of Britain, at least for a time. Also, though, a good deal of uncertainty about that, which I'll look at a little bit later as well. Here's the upper air temperature sequence associated with the same model run. The blue shading there to the north, a purple shading, that's where the very cold air is. Across much of Europe, it's mild, really, for the time of year. And as I run this, what we see is the blues just flirt with the northern part of the UK at times, fairly briefly. It's quite a changeable picture at the end there. The colder plunge from the Arctic into the north and the east of the UK on the GFS model run at least. What does all that mean for temperatures down at the ground level? 15 GMT, Wednesday the 31st, the last day of yet another month. It's amazing how quick January's gone. Not particularly cold, in fact, it's rather a mild picture. Double figures there in Northern Ireland, parts of the southwest, a little bit chillier in Scotland. And that really sets a the theme for much of the week. These, these are uh, maximum temperatures on Friday the 2nd of February. It's a very, very mild picture, 12s, 13s, 14s in southern and central regions. Even there in northeastern Scotland, 12 Celsius, 12 Celsius in Northern Ireland too. Moving forwards to 06 GMT on Monday, the 5th of February, so looking at the overnight lows. I brought this one up because it illustrates a general pattern, which will often be the case through this first week. Chillier nights in the north, that's where the frost risk is greatest, although it's not exceptionally high by any means. But look at some of the overnight lows which have been forecast across England and Wales. 12 Celsius there. These are the minimums, remember, not the maximums. So some really notably mild nights are a possibility through this period. With upper air temperatures being well above the norm, quite a lot of cloud, rather windy conditions or breezy conditions at times. So ideal ingredients to really keep the uh, nights particularly mild for early February. Monday afternoon and what we're seeing at this point is this is when the colder air is moving down from north and east or has done. So low values in Scotland, possibility of sleet or snow showers there, quite chilly into northern England, the east, but even in southern and central regions it is remaining mild even on this GFS run because as I'll show you a little bit later some of the other deterministics don't really support the idea of this relatively brief cold incursion even into the north and the east. I would also say with values of 13, 14, maybe 15 in southern and central regions through this first week, it could well be the start of the beer garden season. So warm enough or mild enough to sit outside in bars and restaurants during the days at least. Of course, there probably will be quite a lot of cloud around, but I would expect, expect some brighter spells, not a great deal of rain, but I'll look at that as well in a moment. The Mogreps G temperature plot for London just really reinforcing the message. The individual lines there show the forecast from the different um, perturbations within the ensemble model. They're all closely packed together through the first week, really indicating broad agreement, good agreement, when it's when they start to diverge for different solutions have been shown by the ensemble. It's really, you've got to go to the 5th, 6th and 7th of February before 
much different starts to appear. So a mild picture in the south, at least through week one, chance of colder incursions in the north. Here's the very, very windy picture at the start of the period and squally one. 70, 80 mile an hour gusts there in the northwest or on Wednesday morning, so the last day of the month. And you can see here on these UKV plots, some very, very heavy rain there for a time. But as that band of rain moves southeastwards, it will be fragmenting. The strong winds as well will be pushing down across the country. But really, it's the northern half of the UK, especially the northwest, which is going to feel the brunt of this. I would expect there to be some disruption up there. Rainfall. These are the aggregates from the ECM and GFS models for days 0 to 5. Wettest in the northwest, especially western Scotland. Not much rain at all in southern and central counties of England. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day aggregates. The general pattern is similar. The totals have continued increasing in the northwest, especially, as I said, western Scotland. The orange is there showing very significant amounts of rain. The GFS on the right, perhaps indicating wetter conditions through the day five to 10 part of the forecast period in central Britain than the ECM is on the left, but reasonably good agreement here that the south of Britain will be having a lot of dry weather through this period. So how do the deterministic models compare in more general terms? Here's the GFS 00 GMT, Tuesday the 6th of February. It's the one which is going for the cold plunge in the north and the east. You can see the blue shade in there into Scotland and moving down into northeastern England. High pressure here and milder air waiting in the wings. But the Canadian model at the same time doesn't have that cold plunge effect in the UK at all. High pressure remains dominant. The orange shade in, in fact, is showing some particularly mild upper level air, so quite different to the GFS. And the German icon model also isn't interested in the cold plunge. Neither is the European ECM, high pressure once more, dominating things. And finally, the UK Met Office Global, not interested either. So, in fact, the orange shading there suggests high temperatures aloft relative to the average of this time of year. But so taking them all together, I wouldn't put too much stock in that GFS run being correct about the cold conditions moving down into the north and to the east of the UK towards the end of the first week. If anything, it's probably going to be a high pressure dominated scene in southern and central regions, more of an Atlantic influence remaining there across the north. So with that probably rather mild and mixed end of the first week, drier in the south, wetter in the north, how do things shape up as we head through the second? Of course, at this range, it's just the trends and the probabilities, not the specifics. Starting with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Good support here for upper air temperatures, so at about 1,500 meters, to be well above that 30 year average, which is shown by the thick black line, at least for the first few days, but they are they are dipping. Most of the runs are dipping towards it, and by the very end there, uh, it's a close to, or maybe even a little bit below average picture. Rainfall across the bottom, well, just a dry picture early on, as I've already said, but the number of spikes is increasing as we head through the second week, so the chance of rain is starting to rise, but I don't think it looks particularly wet at this stage. Maybe there are a few bigger spikes there from around the 11th of February, something to keep an eye on, but the general picture is for the rain risk to be increasing a little bit, but not dramatically so, at least at the moment. The snow row across the bottom, maximum value for week two is four, and it can go up to 33. It's not out of the question, but we'll see snow in the south, but I won't be holding my breath. The Two meter temperature data table for London, maximums across the top, minimums along the bottom. The yellows there indicating 11 to 15 Celsius, very, very mild. The amount of the very, very mild runs decreases. The yellow there reduces in the columns, but still a lot of light green, six to 10. So through this period, it's not looking at all cold. Perhaps towards the very end, with an increase in the amount of dark green, runs going for between one and five Celsius for its chance of 
colder incursions, maybe northwesterly polar maritime air, making it down to the south, but nothing out of the ordinary. The overnight lows, well, as I've already been saying, some very, very mild ones early on, the light greens air, 6 to 10. The chance of frost, though, increases later on. There's a little bit of blue. Those are runs going for zero Celsius or lower overnight, and some of the dark green runs would suggest ground frost would be a possibility. But rather a mild picture to begin with, dipping towards the average later. It's a similar story in Manchester. The snow row values on the bottom are a little bit higher. Not dramatically so, though. And the two-metre temperature data tables follow the same trends there, albeit a slightly lower level. Up to Glasgow, and I've changed the caption here because I think rather than saying it's mild and temperatures dipping, I would say they're fluctuating because early on, this is where we've got the possibility of that brief colder incursion in the north, which the thick green line there, the GFS operational run, was showing in the animation. Temperatures then rising, most of the runs bringing back milder air before falling away again. There are more rain spikes or precipitation spikes along the bottom than there were on the Manchester and London plots, and the snow row values are a little bit higher, reaching a maximum of 11. So it's still, though, a lowish chance. 11 out of 33 is the highest uh, the snow row goes through the second week. The two meter temperature data table for uh, Glasgow, there's the upward trends early, trend early on because quite a few of those runs are bringing in that brief colder incursion from the north. But all in all, it's a fairly mixed picture. Later on, the trend is downwards once more, more dark green beginning to appear. And in this part of the UK, a greater risk of frost from further south. So some colder nights do look likely here. The blues indicating air frost, so temperatures down to or below zero Celsius. But very closer to average picture here, not a particularly cold one by any means, at least according to this data. The GEFS tracker, this shows the number of runs forecasting 850 HPA temperatures in the London area to dip down to or below minus 15 and minus 10 between days 9 and 16 after initiation. In the former category, you have to go all the way back to Thursday the 11th of January just to find one run. In the latter, there have been a few in recent days, but all in all, this does not support the idea of it turning a good deal colder in the south as we head through week two. Rain distribution, and the charts here are showing the probability of five millimeters or more of rain falling on each of the first three days of the second week. The orange is in the northwest to begin with, suggesting between 60 and 80%. The third chart there, the one on the right, is showing the risk of rain extending further southwards and eastwards, at least for risk of significant rain. Going forwards to the following three days, the distribution is similar wettest in the west for northwest, but perhaps a greater chance of more significant amounts of rain making it into central and eastern counties. With that said, that still looks like where the driest conditions will be found. The 10-day GEFS mean surface level pressure plot, so generated by averaging out all the individual runs, has high pressure perhaps a little bit further southwards than it has been earlier on, so colder air perhaps making its way across parts of the UK. When I say colder, I'm not talking about a full throttle Arctic blast or something coming in from the east, but maybe polar maritime air pushing down from the northwest, which would bring an increasing risk of sleet or snow showers to the hills of the north. The mean surface level pressure data table for York, quite an interesting update here. Early on, it's pointing towards higher than average pressure being dominant, but there's a clear downwards trend. In fact, the amount of purple there, which is showing a deep area of low pressure through the middle part of this second week, is quite high. Blues and greens also low than average pressure. So perhaps just a chance here of something to look out for as we go through week two, maybe turning very windy at least for a while. So to summarize, week one. Rain mostly affects the north and particularly the northwest. It will often be mild or very mild in the south, colder on some days in the north. Week two, 
a changeable pattern is favored with temperatures above the average early on. It probably turns somewhat colder later, and there is that chance of very windy conditions through the middle part of the week, just something to keep an eye on at this stage. Therefore, the risk of snow increases over high ground in the north, but the possibilities in the south look very limited at this stage, to say the least. So, uh, there we have it. I think in the short term at least, the focus for much of the UK is on mild or even very mild conditions for chance of it turning somewhat colder as we head through the second week. But I'm not really seeing much of a signal at all for very cold conditions, just something closer to the average with that wintry risk rising in the north, particularly over high ground. Nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful as ever. If you did, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already. Also, stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Just finally, finally, I've made a number of changes to my recording studio setup. So if you notice a deterioration in the quality or an improvement in it in terms of the sound and the visuals, let me know in the comments section below. Any feedback like that is much appreciated. So thanks very much now, and I'll see you again soon. Bye now.